The President, please be seated. The Chamber is now in session. According to our new schedule, this afternoon we are going to hear Cet two civil parties, Chen Navi and Tod Munen. Before hearing the statements of these two civil parties, the Chamber would like to inform the parties to the proceedings that uh, the Chamber refers to various requests of the co-prosecutors to put documents before the Chamber under Rule 87. The Chamber will look, allocate time to the, part, to the parties at the end of the hearing of testimonies of the witnesses and experts, experts concerning the character of the accused to put documents which are already on the case file before the Chamber according to Rule 87.3. If parties wish to file new documents according to Rule 87.4, they should do so as soon as possible. So this is just uh, the notification in relation to the request made by the co-prosecutors this morning and it is an opportunity to also inform the parties to the proceedings. The Chamber hopes that uh, the parties to the proceeding are now informed and uh, follow the Decision. Voilà donc pour l'information des parties. The court official is now instructed to call witness correction a civil party Chen Navi to the seat reserved for the civil party. President, good afternoon, uh, Madame Chen Navi. Bonjour, Madame Chen Navi. Is your name Chen Navi? Response: Yes, uh, my name is Chen Navi. Question, how Question. old are you? Quel âge avez -vous? 
Response. I am 70 years old. J'ai 70 ans. Question. Question. Where were you born? Où êtes-vous né? Response. Réponse. In Korkel commune, Korkel, commune Saan de district, district de Saan, Kandal province. province de Kandal. Question. Question. Where do you live? Où vivez-vous actuellement? Response. Réponse. I live in Phnom Penh. J'habite à Phnom Penh. Question. Question. What is your father's name? Quel est le nom de votre père? Response. Réponse. His name is Chen Jap. Chen Jap. When people were evacuated, he was more than 90 years old. Lors de l'évacuation, il avait plus de 90 ans. Il est décédé aujourd'hui. Question. What is your mother's Quel name? Quel est le nom de votre mère? Response. Réponse. Her name is Hong Srun. Hong Srun. When she still lived, she was about 40 years old, but she died long ago. Elle est morte il y a longtemps, à l'âge de 40 ans. The president, uh, the chamber would like to give the floor to the civil party lawyer président, to la briefly inform civils. the court the identity afin qu'il nous présente the reasons why the civil party has joined as a civil party and the grounds for her civil reparation claim in relation to the facts uh, alleged in which uh, the accused Kang Kek Il, alias Deutsche, has been charged uh, and uh, during the time from the 1975 to 1979. And the lawyers are recommended to also support or provide supporting documents uh, in relation to uh, the claims and the grounds for such claims and application la of Chen Navi. Pour la civile, Madame Chen Navi. Mr. Kung Pisei, Mr. President, Pisei, thank you, merci, le Your Honours. I am the national Madame, Monsieur, les juges. lawyer. Je suis l'avocat representing ah, je suis civil parties group 2 représentant les parties civiles du groupe 2 I may now proceed to briefly tell the court about the identity of uh, Madame Chennavi She has filed a Madame complaint and the ER number in Khmer 0015 Two, three, zero, zero, six, seven, three, six, seven. In English, ERN zero, 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 one, five, six, eight, two, five, and cinq. She also obtained her identification card, Elle a which can be found under ERN number 00015274. The ID card number is 0101. Five four six five eight zero one zero one cinquante four six five eight There is another list. The list of the victims who have been smashed at S21 under ER number in Khmer zero zero one five. 
40, on trouve une liste de noms de prisonniers exécutés S21. Uh, her husband's name can Dans be cette found liste, uh, figure uh, le nom de son mari. The list. And uh, he worked in the public work section. Il travaillait aux travaux publics. He was arrested on the 22nd of February 1976. 1976. And there is a photo of her husband. On trouve aussi une photo de son mari. Obtained from S21. S21. Madame Chinnavi is the wife of uh, Madame Alias and I have already briefed uh, the court. I hope uh, this information helps. Voilà donc les informations the court. dont nous disposons et qui sont au dossier concernant la partie civile. The president, the president, the civil party lawyer group two, would you wish to? allow the civil party to uh, give her statement on her own or would you wish to put questions and then she would then respond to your questions instead? Mr. Kompisai, Mr. President, uh, I would request that uh, questions would be put to her. The President, do you wish that uh, she le président tell the accounts of her que la partie civile fasse le uh, récit the story uh, as a civil party or would you ask the court that you put questions to her in order for her to respond to the questions in uh, describing her accounts or would you prefer having her telling the account on her own without your questions Mr. Kong Pisei has agreed uh, she would be uh, telling the court uh, the complete account of her story, actually, and then I would follow up uh, with some questions if I feel needs arise. The President, uh, Madame Chunavi, is the wife Madame Chunavi, it is now time for you to tell the court the facts and your relation to the crimes alleged uh, in which the accused Kangeki uh, Elis uh, has been charged. Uh, and also you should tell the court uh, the damages physically or emotionally, um, the emotional or physical damages uh, that you have had uh, suffered ever since. You may now proceed. Je vous en prie. Chinavi. La partie civile. Your honors, the parties to the proceeding, Monsieur le and Président, Madame, Messieurs les juges, distinguished guests. Please forgive me if I make something wrong in my statement or if I am too forgetful because I am not uh, healthy enough. Sometimes my memory is so poor and uh, I have been living in such a condition for many years and uh, sometimes I am more like a mentally ill woman. And uh, if I understand correctly, then the, the president would prefer uh, hearing the account 
entendre de ma bouche le récit de story that I should tell from the beginning when I left Trump and the president actually it would be good if you can actually tell the court from the data when you left your home during the evacuation and if you can really establish the linkages of uh, uh, the story in relation to S21 and what happened to your husband. Madame Chenavi, could you please be reminded or instructed to wait until you see the red light is on your mic before you can speak. Chenavi, Mr. President, Your Honours, and the Court, my name is Chenavi. I lived in Phnom Penh since my childhood because when I passed the exam at the medical school, les examens, then people médecine. were recruiting infirmières, and then I attended the medical school in Phnom Penh, the government uh, school. Je suis venu there were thousands of candidates, uh, de but only approximately 100 were seulement une centaine granted uh, the, the uh, were uh, passed the exam. Uh, qui ont and I worked uh, as, uh, at the Prakhet uh, Mili Hospital je after that. Je à à One day, Mélier, my sibling-in-law got uh, the appendix problem and a eu uh, operation was needed. Uh, Il and uh, the sibling was treated uh, at the hospital et where I worked and he liked uh, my care for him and il he would propose to marry me. And then I got married uh, with him. However, I, it is very personal. I got married three times. En fait, uh, uh, first, I got married in 1962, and then my husband worked in the same hospital. And then we had another wedding in Comport because my uh, husband's relatives were living in Comport, so we reorganized uh, the wedding reception there. And uh, the family of my husband uh, worked at the public La famille de mon mari travaillait work. Aux travaux publics. And he was uh, in charge of the personnel unit. Uh, Et de, uh, he au du personnel. was related to Prince Il Contol, who was the Prince Contol. minister of the Public Work Ministry and Ong Peck uh, was the high Ong official there. And, and later on, he was promoted to uh, be the chief of the aviation unit uh, at the airport. At that time, they addressed me as Madame Chenavi. When later on, we bought a house next to Tul Tumpung Market during the at that time, uh, bombardments were severe, but la ville the, déjà des I would like to make it clear that uh, my account Je is based on my honest uh, memory, and uh, on the 18th, uh, I saw soldiers 
equipped with arms uh, coming to our house and asked us to leave our home. Otherwise, the Vietnamese would drop their bombs on those houses and we would be killed. Then I asked uh, them where should they wish us to go and they said that uh, we could go to our hometown. And then I asked uh, how long would uh, we leave our home and we were told that uh, it would not be long today the longest uh, and uh, actually in our house uh, there were full of uh, furniture and things uh, but since we would not be living too long then we did not bring along a lot of things with us we were on the track and I could only carry with us 16 can of rice. And uh, we went together with my father, with my sibling, and we headed through uh, the road uh, uh, next to Psa Dantkou at uh, the roundabout of uh, Kbal Tnal. Then we were stopped. And we were asked uh, to wait uh, before moving further. And uh, at that time, my family uh, relatives uh, who were sellers at uh, the nearby market uh, got a lambretta and uh, she could uh, make use of the lambretta to carry her belongings. But then we all got stuck at the roundabout. Uh, the next morning, then after cooking a pot of rice, uh, then we were allowed uh, to move to the east uh, bank. And then we took right uh, and uh, uh, when we uh, crossed to the other side of the bridge, uh, there was a Prek Pra Pagoda, the place where we then were stopped. And we saw the black cloaked uh, soldiers uh, with uh, uh, weapons at the ready. And uh, we were stopped uh, for a while. And uh, after some milks, then when we wanted to relieve ourselves, then we would go into the, uh, uh, the river bank, and then I saw corpses and the corrugated uh, metal sheet uh, would be used to cover the corpse. And uh, during meal time, uh, after we had the meal, then I s uh, went to the river bank, uh, to the river actually, to relieve myself, but saw uh, the corpse. And I don't remember the exact time, but maybe in the late afternoon, then we were allowed to move further. And my kid, who was about four years old, he was not yet um, sent to school, but because he uh, liked uh, reading something, then he could read. And... Uh, At that time, we were forced to move down to the destination. We did not know for sure where it would be, and uh, we, could, we would stop along the road. And then after one month, uh, then we reached uh, our hometown at Talon village. And uh, Phnom Penh people were fully evacuated. But uh, I was frustrated because I did not know actually on the way to you know, in the middle of nowhere, and uh, one day I was called to the meeting. 
à une réunion. And all the people from Phnom Penh et tous les uh, habitants de Phnom Penh qui étaient là ont été convoqués à cette réunion qui a eu lieu dans un verger. And the chief of the cooperative, le chef de la coopérative, I don't remember his je ne me souviens plus de son nom, he was a carpenter who was then the cooperative. He said that his revolution was uh, successful. He started the revolution la from the 1972. Uh, and I'm here to tell uh, the judges uh, about the honest uh, story, a loyal si story si of uh, what I witnessed, uh, what I saw, and uh, I'm only telling the truth. He said that his revolution was so successful, it's more like the way Deutsche always said in his uh, statement. He said that uh, he came to Phnom Penh to uh, give some injection to some like Chuan Nat, in the meeting, he would share such information with us. And then, after the meeting, we were led home. And uh, I was so worried uh, having attended such a meeting. The next morning, my brother came and uh, he was seen walking under somebody houses because we could see the spider web uh, was still a stained on his head uh, because he could have been walking under those houses and then uh, because he came with a boat uh, then we could uh, travel with him to our hometown on the boat and uh, in Probably June, or May or June, May we or were at June home, and my brother chez nous told me that uh, au village. the soldiers were good, but I think he did Là, not know the real nature of the soldiers' work. Bons, uh, he talked about the soldiers, soldiers who were good people, and they said that uh, they were good because they asked us not to leave our door closed because they would be there to protect us. Maybe they would call you, and so I heard that. But because she could not hear and they would guard the house and after that, we were asked to work in the village, we returned home and ate at home and we carried the water for our own use. And after the evacuation, Anka ordered us to go to Badambo and people from Phnom Penh were evacuated and dispersed around in those villages in Matambong. And when my group arrived, they said the 17 people were evacuated and they would only keep the based people. And before the evacuations, the militia or Chlo came to ask me. That person used to study with me in the same school, and he came to ask about the work my husband did in Phnom Penh, and my elder sister, who was the best person, went up to the room and she puts the hands around her mouth and whisper quietly. But I did not uh, notice that, and I did not yet respond to the militia's question. And maybe her son was also a militia. She, put her, she claps her hand around her mouth like that. And she said, Americans. And she said, American CIA. She even responded before I had the chance to do it. And, and I blamed her. 
I did not have the opportunity to tell the minister yet because my husband worked at the civil aviation and he mentioned the difficulty of flying because of the American bombing and he worked and his body was skinny because he only focused on the nation and after I blamed her a fortnight later they came to tell me that all the 17 people had to evacuate, had to move on, and by the 7 a.m. we all had to pack our belongings, everything had to be moved, and we can only bring just decent belonging with us. And then the ox cuts will be prepared for us, and then we dropped us at the Dakel Pagoda, at the Dakel sub-district. First, when we arrived, nobody came, but later on, a lot of people kept coming, and in the morning, it was full. That district, that sub-district, was adjacent to the Preamble sub-district. We were waiting there, and the tracks were not yet arrived, and the militia men said the tracks were transporting the sick people from Gotham first, then would be at Sampan and Preamble, and then us. So we had to wait. We kept waiting, and another militiaman came up and told us, let me go back a little bit. Before the evacuation, I was thinking, I think they already prepared this plan. As Deutsch said, the important thing is that the revolution had to take the important prisoners, as Deutsch stated. First, the important prisoners, the high ranking officers, the intellectuals, and those people will be taken to work at the district office. The Duck and Nguyen Heng. Nguyen Heng used to study with me. He was my neighbor. From what I knew, he was a tax collector at Psatmate, but after the evacuation, he went to his own village. So Nguyen Heng and my husband and T. Alice worked together. On the day, we were waiting to be transported to Badambong. That militia man came to ask for the two names that Onka requested T. Alice and Nguyen Heng to a meeting at the office, at the district office. Mon mari devait se rendre à une réunion au bureau Pray du district, in Pray district. Dans le district de Saran. And they used a bicycle. Et ils ont utilisé un vélo. Et il a semblé réaliser ce qui se passait. Said, whoever requested by Anka for study never returned. I kept hearing that. So during the evacuation, the situation was like hell. We were just waiting for them to be to tell us what to do. And when my husband was requested, he put on his shirt and he handed a watch to me. I looked at his face and he told me. Darling, keep quiet. This situation happens everywhere throughout the country. Just strengthen yourself and look after the children. That is what I want you to do. Just educate our children. He did not say anything else because the request was urgent. I did not think of what's going to happen to him at the time. When the trucks arrived at the Coquel Pagoda, all the people from the Pagoda were called to board the truck. Then my family and the Ngun Haint were not asked to board the truck yet, and that they would take us back to the base village. I recall it was uh, at dusk, and it, it was in the pagoda. I tried to 
be strong. De, Then forte. two carts arrived Ensuite, and transported us back to our parents' houses. Ils nous ont ramenés dans la au domicile After that, de mes parents. They, Après, they arrived and the children will be sent for education. As Anka has many eyes, as pineapples would monitor and track our every activity. And that will be put with the regular force. I was tempered. But like Forger. the old saying says, if your fate is to be determined or to survive, then you would not be dead. Dit, bien, si ton At that time, my children were put into the children's unit and they tried to worked their best and despite they were being scolded as they were the children of the imperialists. I kept working and I was asked to raise the dikes, the dams. I the dams. On m'a ordonné de construire une digue. I was tempered so hard. Et moi, on m'a fait travailler it's, if I très dur. mention every detail, it's going to be a long time. Et si je vous parle de cela dans le menu détail, cela People va prendre beaucoup de temps. People said that that area that we worked on had never been plowed for four years, so the soil was so hard. When I plusieurs années, when I dug the hole, dur, it just et lorsque j'ai commencé à creuser. Je ne suis pas arrivé à, I à, à creuser. Myself to try to J'essayais de creuser the sword, but le it sol, go through. mais je n'arrivais pas. Et je pouvais the blisters on my hands, and I didn't dare to say anything. Marque les, les ampoules, There were other people who had pity on me, mains, and then the group chief said, told me to be quiet. Et le chef du groupe m'a dit I was tempered euh, to on work vous dit qu'il faut il faut pas parler People said maybe because mm, I used to be a medic uh, or working forger, in a medical department when they saw me holding a kettle they saw I worked in the medical department and probably I tried to be hygienic to boil the water before I drink que j'essayais de faire preuve d'hygiène que je voulais I was blamed and scolded on a lot of things. And I told them I respected Anka. Anka asked me to drink boiled water. That's why I boiled the kettle. And during the rainy season, pendant la saison des pluies, there was a chief. Il y avait un chef. He was pretty high. He probably a chief of a cooperative. He said that I passed all the schools, all the classes, but then I have to pass another level, and that will be the final level. And if you tempered and pass and you survived, that would be your success. Otherwise, you would be dead. Votre réussite va être déterminée par le fait de rééduquer. Of the cooperative chief, I recognize him as I used to start to get into a car together with him to study in Phnom Penh. Je suis monté dans la voiture. Avec lui pour étudier Let me just uh, speed up a bit. De, un petit peu I did not want to go to detail because dans les détails, otherwise it's going to be too sinon, long. Cela va prendre so they tried temps. everything to temper me Donc and I seemed to survive. And during the day, et survécu. the of the liberation, et I heard a lot of gunfires and explosions, and we were chattering, and probably thought the liberation would be soon. We still could hear the announcement on the loudspeaker, and when I looked at the sky, it was red from the Phnom Penh direction. Then Anka came to us 
and order us to move to the west. Nous a de nous and that we all had to go to the west Et to go up the mountain. But we, we came from the riverside and we did not understand the purpose of going up here. And that we, said, we thought if we could then we would go back to our nous village. Que si nous and at si nous dawn, um, nous the, à au village, we could go à to where you wish nous, because the chief of the cooperative uh, already fled and some of the chiefs already left. Déjà so I came to my chefs, village and then également. my Donc children, my three children uh, came. Then we reunited and I heard an announcement on the radio. I forget to, uh, to mention one point. When my husband was called to go away by Anka, at that time I thought he would not be returned because that was the normal observance and I would and I thought that I would be separated from him forever and to me my feeling at the time was so light so desperate I was empty in my mind I could not think of anything and I could not cry because I did not want them to see or I would be taken away as well. So when I heard the announcement on the radio that the National Salvation Front would appeal to those people who had a profession or who used to work in Phnom Penh with technical skills, then those people should return to their respective uh, departments or ministries. I don't want to uh, talk much about myself because I had been in living with hopelessness and despair for so long. Even today, if I am asked to die, I would uh, not hesitate. Whatever I do today is for next incarnation. I try to do good deeds. Faire des bonnes actions pour ma prochaine Upon hearing the announcement on the radio, I had a feeling of uh, looking forward to the returning of my husband. Or maybe I should go to his ministry just in case that he would return back. And the best people who used to live in Phnom Penh, who were my neighbors, asked me to go to Phnom Penh. So the three of us walked to Phnom Penh. We started walking in early morning from Kokhail to Kul Krosang, but everything was so quiet. And when we reached Chiang Ong Rai, we saw a Vietnamese female soldier and she told me not to go to Phnom Penh. So we were not allowed to go to Phnom Penh. Nous then how could we go and check Penh. our house? Alors, then we returned uh, home. Nous, uh, but because it was already nous, dark, nous, then nous, we asked the people who nous, lived nous, in Chiang Rai to stay overnight nous, at their place. Nous, and we tried si to, to find means of reaching Phnom Penh. But it is hard because a lot of Vietnamese soldiers and they were everywhere. And then I decided finally to go back to my village. Several days later, the people from Chiang Rai told us about the plan that was announced on the radio. But 
un plan for the best people who pour le peuple who de used to know the tactics and the way to the way they could move around as they used to be fighting then they went to collect some war spoils when i return home And regarding my elder sister, my first elder sister, I regarded her as my mother after her death. I still remember my mom's words, who told me that I would be suffering after her death. Après sa mort, il aurait de la souffrance. When I grew up, my elder sister told me that I was born on the New Year's Day, or the, or the year of the rabbit. I myself could not recall my exact date of birth. When I arrived in Phnom Penh again, mm-hmm. I told my elder sister that I would go to Phnom Penh to go to his ministry just in case he would return. And she told me that she would not go to Phnom Penh with me because she didn't know how to live. She was comfortable only living in the countryside. But I decided to go ahead to Phnom Penh. So for my second trip to Phnom Penh, I came with my one of my sons who is currently a doctor when we reached Dotampung market I from the distant the location who used to be my house was gone and then people who worked in the ministries before asked me to launch my application to the ministry When I met uh, Tichung uh, in Tudumpu, where I stayed uh, at his house, I went to the ministry to view the biography. When we talked to each other and revealed our situation, it was difficult for us to, to say anything. And when I want to check the progress on my biography, I was told to return in a week's time. La semaine suivante. Then one of the teachers had a house near the Jane Haynes residence, near Tom Nopmai, and I met him after 79. He was an entrepreneur. I looked at him and tried to, and he, his face was familiar, but I could not recall his name. Cependant, je ne pouvais me rappeler de son nom. So after I walked past him, Donc, I returned après, and I stopped him. Euh, après l'avoir croisé, je, je me suis retourné. I could not re- recall his euh, name after the three years, eight months period. And actually, de, he was my nephew. Mois écoulé. Lui était mon neveu, mais je ne pourrais, pouvais pas me rappeler de son nom. He told me, dear Bun Liang, and he greeted me. Euh, You can imagine that I could not recognize my nephew after three years and eight months. And he himself surprisingly could not recall me. And when I told her that of my name, and the wife of Ti Hao Tek, then she recognized that I was his aunt. And he asked about my husband, and after I told him, then I cried, and he stopped asking. Donc j'ai fondu en larmes, et il a arrêté de me poser des questions. I told him that probably I would go and work at a 7 January hospital as I made my application there. Je fais une demande pour travailler à l'hôpital du 7 janvier. Here, only people who could work would be allowed to work, but those vendors would not be allowed to apply. So, when I worked at the hospital, I gave him some uh, medication when he left for his village to meet his wife. Avant qu'il ne reparte pour aller dans son village. 
et qu'il re retrouve sa femme. When I worked there, we, Lorsque I je worked with some other people, avec people including German experts. German... After that event, Après cet événement, I went to work. je suis allé travailler. I started Actually, I entered Phnom Penh on the Phnom Penh, in 1979, and I started working at the Seven Jan Jury Hospital or the Chinese Hospital in about 1980. The chief of the department held a meeting one day and convoqué une réunion. Actually, we studied, uh, we were called to study a lot of political sessions too. But one day, the chief of the department called us for a meeting to go to uh, S21 for a visit. So we went there, and I actually was afraid of ghosts. When I learned that it was a two-slide prison, but actually it was the Punyayat High School. Because a chanson to the Punyayat High School was a house of my mother, of my, of the sister of my mother's-in-law. One of my elder in law also had a house adjacent to the two swine prison. So people from the whole department went for a visit to two swine prison. And we were told there were some survivors who were there to greet the guests and to greet us and to tell us of what was going on. I still remember Mr. Ng Actually, Mr. Ng was evacuated in 75 on the Kampung Sam Street to Wheel Ring. But because after Phnom Penh fell and the electricity was cut off, then people were called to fix the electricity and Mr. Ng was called to come to Phnom Penh to fix the electricity. He said first he was in prison and I'm not sure if he was uh, detained together with uh, Jumai, but uh, he got his nails pulled. His nails and toes were pulled and he poured alcohol on the bare hands. You can imagine. When all the, hair, all the nails were pulled out and the bleeding was there, then they poured the alcohol on. It's like a live fish is being cut and a salt applied onto the body. He said he describes the event of evacuation in 75 and the subsequent living conditions in 76, 77. For instance, in 75, the 17 Ibra people were, were brought in and at the end of 76, because the 17 people were already finished, then they brought in the best people. That's what he said at the time. Then he asked his subordinates to guide us at different departments, different floors and different buildings. I did not go to the Mais north side. Allé, uh, a woman with a, hand, with a portable loudspeaker told us that people who were detained in this room was alleged to be a CIA agent and was tortured. The person was handcuffed and shackled and a rack was used to rack on his face and you could see the blood stain still left on the floor. And 
you could even see the mark of the body of the person on the floor. And at that time, I was still, I could recall the shouting of my elder sister that he was a CIA agent. So I had a feeling that he died. And when I look at different cells, different forms of treatments uh, were shown by the guide. And when we returned at the reception area, Mr. Engbert told us that my husband would be there. And now I recall if he was the chief of the department of the public works, Département d'un service au ministère des Travaux publics. Actually, when my husband worked there, he bought a big dog. Il avait acheté and un Mr. Ungpai also chien. had a dog. Ungpai, lui aussi then, a chien. because he wanted to breed his dog with my husband's dog, then he would take his dog to breed with my husband's. And I could recall that event when he talked that he worked with my husband. Pour que les deux chiens puissent donner naissance à des petits à des petits chiots. Et je me rappelle qu'il m'avait parlé de ça. Later on, I asked. Uh, that I could not uh, move Ensuite, further, then I was given the documents uh, which I had uh, copied, uh, and I saw the name of my husband, Dear Hao Tak, who was arrested Tuck, and detained at S21 on the 2nd of February. 1976 only within the country, not to outside the world. Then I saw another person I am familiar with. And this document uh, can be obtained at the tools line because uh, they say that they could not give the document as it is part of the archive. So another person, Mao, was detained in December. A certain Mao a été arrêté en décembre. And uh, I saw the photo up during the time when I was uh, paying the visit to photo the vicinity of S21, and uh, uh, some f negatives were not uh, yet developed, uh, and uh, the crew members from Germany uh, promised that they would uh, have uh, them developed uh, and give the photo to me, and then I got uh, this photo, and I would like to go back a little bit. Uh, after I was called from Wat Kael, I was actually taken to my hometown. Two families were transferred to the hometown. We were lonely at that time. And it was a farmhouse. And we were sitting on the couch and looking outside at dusk. We saw two bicycles. And uh, probably, I believe, they were the local militias who were riding the bicycle. And uh, I saw people who were sitting behind those bicycles where their, shack, uh, their hands were shackled to the bicycle. So I recall the moment uh, my husband uh, experienced uh, because uh, I actually was educated uh, to live in a dignified uh, family, and uh, my family, my husband's relative, uh, were raised uh, in Kampot. Uh, his name was Dear Chan, 
and I still pay homage to uh, the dead soul of this person uh, because I would pay ritual visit to his tomb and uh, I still don't understand why my husband was handcuffed. I am here to ascertain the truth and to also ask questions why my husband, why my auntie, my mother-in-law and, and my sister-in-law, who's uh, all siblings, uh, eight people in total in each family were all smashed uh, and drowned in the river and they would be taken uh, by truckloads uh, to be smashed uh, at the uh, foot of the mountain. And I don't understand why the family of Sim Va or Ong Wan, their son-in-laws who were senior officials in the old regime were also executed and, in, and, and killed in the pit. So each family now have only one member left. Uh, and uh, I don't know whether this group of people have filed their complaint to find justice for their lost uh, loved ones, but I really am thankful to this hybrid court uh, for finding justice for us, and I really am very grateful, and I really wish you all the best, uh, all the judges and people who really bring justice to us. And I wish that uh, uh, every kind of human being stop being too cruel like the Pol Pot uh, people and Pol Pot himself. I think having said this, I may have forget where I stopped. Uh, uh, okay, I may move on a little bit back to the time when people were arrested and shackled, so I could see the auntie who was my neighbor who came to me and whispered into my ear, saying that, oui, did you see um, your husband? And actually, our house uh, was adjacent uh, to one Alors, another, maison, but uh, we didn't have wall, we didn't have big fence, de, uh, so we mur, could see every movement uh, or any figure uh, moving around uh, inside uh, uh, or in front of our house. And she asked me whether I saw my husband uh, being taken away and being uh, uh, handcuffed. And I told her that, well, of course, I saw him. I was so moved. And I told her that actually it was because of the one in our home who accused him of being CIA agent, and I think uh, it was that person who actually paid his gratitude to Anka and then implicated my husband as the CIA. And the auntie whispered that my husband would be detained somewhere near, but she was a very kind person. I knew that she was good during the very difficult time, although there were plenty of other people around. And when I saw my husband was being handcuffed, I was a strong woman, actually, at the beginning, uh, but uh, I could not hold uh, my emotion. I could cry unstoppable, unstop I mean, with, uh, no one could stop me. However, I tried to be strong because if I made this hurt, uh, then people would also arrest. Me. Uh, I was told that uh, my husband committed a heavy offense, so he would be detained at Office 15, and he, as I was told, uh, would be offered the 
what we call the pig meal for him. And I could imagine, manger, and your honors, please help uh, think about this. I heard about the food or the meals uh, offered to my husband, the pig meal. And I believe that it is very inhumane. And uh, I try to weep to weep in the manner that I did not really allow people to hear it because I was afraid I would too be arrested. I was so shocked why the person with dignity, a very a person respected by many as my husband, was arrested and detained and badly treated because my husband was quite popular everyone knew him when people would like to work at the office then my husband would be kind enough to really help them to work although they offered him some money he said that if you gave me money, then I would never help you because he helped people based on his conscience. He was a very good person, the person who could not end up being treated like that. I could identify human being into four. I'm very religious. I'm talking about Buddhism. So if anyone follow Buddha principle, then people would understand uh, how our life uh, would be divided and how we should treat other people. So people are, are classified into four groups. So we have a group of people who look like human beings, who have very kind heart, but some people with a human bon, body, but uh, with the kind of evil heart, a kind of mauvais. very dangerous animal's heart. So we Comme listen to méchant. this kind of uh, preach uh, of uh, the, uh, the, the Dharma. And uh, I believe that it is quite true because now these are the people, these were the people uh, with the evil heart because people who really treat uh, people are the people like animals. How could my husband do something wrong, so wrong that he was detained? He never committed any wrongdoing. He treated the family very well. He loved everyone and he, is, he was respected. I think a human being born the same, although we use different languages. However, human beings should treat human beings equally, not like the way they treated animals. So people would like to live in dignity, people really want peace, people want to get rich. People want to have freedom and happiness. Why people who did not make any mistake was detained and mistreated? I don't understand what kind of human being those captors were. Because even um, giving just the leftover rice to human being would not be appropriate, let alone fed them with some kind of food avec, uh, and forced people to work endlessly and then treated them like this. And I want Réservé the world to help think about this very inhumane acts by group of people. Uh, aux actes After he was taken away, he disappeared. We never got any contact. Later on, I was taken to be tempered. I don't remember the person who took me to the pedal fields. And I had to follow him, I had to dig canals, and I had to work so hard to 
fulfill the quota, otherwise I would uh, be smashed. And I think uh, people, the more than one million people suffered uh, in different fashion. I experienced a difficult situation in a different mode. The President, uh, Madame Chinnavi, since it is an appropriate time to uh, take adjournment, and the Chamber has noted that uh, you have been rather exhausted uh, by uh, talking uh, alone, and uh, of course we are here listening to you, and we pay attention to your speech or statement, uh, but we would like to instruct uh, you that, uh, please, after we resume the session, could you concentrate uh, on the linkages of the, 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 the time when your husband uh, was detained and uh, tortured, for example, at S21, and uh, please uh, don't stray far away from uh, that matter, and uh, we will resume. Nous reprendrons d'ici 20 minutes.